President Trump has called NAFTA, quote, the worst trade deal ever signed by the United States. But many people in Kansas have benefited from the free trade arrangement, which has led their senator, Republican Jerry Moran, to urge caution. As Senator Moran puts it, quote, I am concerned that withdrawing from the agreement will harm our farmers and ranchers and cost us jobs. We welcome Senator Morrell now, coming to us from Capitol Hill. Welcome to the program, Senator. It's good to have you here. Thanks so much. So give us the perspective from Kansas. How much would withdrawing from NAFTA really hurt your state and the people in it? Well, I think it's significant. Nothing wrong with getting, uh, trying to get a better trade agreement to modernize, to update, to bring in technology. But if the actual withdrawal from NAFTA occurs, I, I think it's very damaging to the economy. The way I explained this during the tax debate, and I think the tax code changes, uh, the tax reductions are helpful to a growing economy, but you have to have income in order to get the benefits of tax rate reductions. <laughs> and if we lose our income in Kansas, the benefits of the tax code changes uh, will be greatly diminished. And what I would say is that we're an export state. And you mentioned in the prelude to me that it was about agriculture, and that's absolutely true. I mean, Mexico, for example, is the number one purchaser of agriculture commodities from the state of Kansas uh, in the world. But we're also an airplane manufacturing state, an automobile manufacturing state, uh, and how we do business and how we sell what we produce uh, brings income to our state. And so we are urging caution. Uh, and I think there's been a belief on the part of some that right. American agriculture in particular is always going to be uh, there and no country right. could walk away from our market, from our ability to export to them. Unfortunately, there's significant competition. And let me put this in a broader context that you know well, but not all of our viewers may. And that is, this is not a particularly good time for this to happen to the agricultural, the farmers of America right now. We're going to put up a chart. You won't be able to see it, but you know the numbers, which shows basically net farm income. And it had peaked really back in 2013, about more than $120 billion. It's down now to like $63 billion. It has really come down. So this is a particularly difficult time for farmers to take a reduction. Absolutely. There is nothing easy about being a farmer ever, but it is especially difficult now. Commodity prices are low. Farm income, as your chart shows, significant down. The way I would draw the picture for our viewers, uh, you can drive across Kansas, and most of our towns have what we call a grain elevator, where grain is stored uh, before it's uh, sold someplace or exported. That grain is now, those elevators are full. The grain is piled on the ground. Uh, there is, has been little market and little movement in that grain, and so we're still trying to get rid of uh, harvest that occurred a year ago and we'll have harvest again this year so uh, our access to world markets not just Mexico and Canada but uh, access to the world to export those agriculture commodities is how we earn a living talking about the rest of the world 11 countries including Mexico and Canada have just agreed to move forward on the Trans-Pacific Partnership of course the US has pulled out of that so uh, given the situation right now how could a NAFTA pullout exacerbate the fallout now that you're not even part of the TPP well I, I I'm discouraged that we're not part of TPP and you saw Canada announce the agreement uh, this week uh, in the absence of the United States. The administration has indicated they want to negotiate not bi uh, not multilateral agreements, but bilateral agreements between two countries, not multi-countries. Uh, and I, what I would do is, what I've done is encourage them to, to negotiate those agreements now. We need every market today. It's something that can't wait. And particularly in regard to TPP, real concern that that leaves China in a better position than they otherwise would be. And I see them as our great competitor and they don't play by the rules. So we need to make certain we don't make it easier for China to dominate uh, the trade, trade markets.